Sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will always haunt me. That's my version of the popular childhood rhyme. I often repeated the original version to myself in the dear hope that I would actually believe it. But in truth, I never did. Words when used as missiles can cause irreparable damage. I want you to think about the worst thing that somebody has ever said to you. You remember it, don't you? It's like a punch, a physical pain. But the emotional legacy of that pain is an ache, an ache that might last forever. Today, I'm up speaking. I'm standing up to talking down. I'm standing up to the words that would eventually lead to me trying to take my own life numerous times. I'm standing up to the words that impacted me, my life, and my future. Those 12 words, however, I will not repeat. They are now buried, they are gone. Here's my interpretation of the voice. Your voice is a powerful weapon. Voices impact and voices influence. Your voice can disarm terrorists. Your voice can elect politicians, empower activists. Your voice can inspire children, compel citizens into action, convince diplomats. Your voice can give confidence to an economy and our voices tell stories. Did you know our brains are wired to remember stories? And stories are up to 22 times more memorable than facts and figures alone. And that's according to Jennifer Aker, Stanford University marketing professor. Today I want to tell you a story about my story. It's a collection of tales that will make you sad, give you strength, but ultimately compel you to use your voice. I love my voice. I love talking. I love creating, writing, and sharing stories. My voice now flies across continents with the social web. I encourage people to engage with me, learn from me, and hopefully be empowered by me. I'm compelled today to tell you to ask you to tell your story, to give your words some noise, to use your voice. I'm up speaking, I'm standing up to talking down. The voice is a gift. The voice combines audio with the words in your head and when weaved together, they create a story. To have your innermost thoughts heard your opinions taken on board is powerful and empowering. But we must all take responsibility for our own voice. Let me tell you a story. It's a story I've never told before. It's a story about losing my voice, not having the courage to use my voice, but finally, how I found my voice. When I lost my voice. At 15 years of age, I arrived home and realized that I would be home alone. My only companions for the next six months were the echoed filled walls that spoke back to me. I had words in my head, but I was stripped of my voice and I was left to fend for myself. I remember a social worker visiting me and I felt very excited about that fact. I was eager at the prospect of being fostered or taken in. The middle-aged man didn't really look at me, listen to me. He scoffed at my stories of how I ended up living on my own at 15 years of age. He took down roughly written notes. 
Then he declared he was off on holidays for three weeks. He never returned. So I stayed in that house on my own. My voice was lost. I didn't matter in the world. I was irrelevant. Each night after school, I would carry out my job. I was a professional dishwasher. I'd come home late at night and I would light the fire. The fire gave me warmth, but it also gave me hope. I had visions and dreams about being somebody who had a voice to help others, to make a difference in whatever it was that I chose to do. However, the silence and feeling muted was my brick wall. I didn't know how to find my voice. My 15-year-old voice, looking back, made a lot of sense. All I wanted was a chance to voice my innermost sadness and loneliness. To give some noise to the loneliness and isolation I was feeling. Inside, if I'm honest, I was dying. My confidence, whatever level of confidence I had as a reluctant 15-year-old, was waning. And that loneliness, fear and silence was turning into anger. I was angry at the world for not helping me. But there was one person during that time that wanted to listen to the lost soul. Henry worked alongside me in the hotel. I found happiness and somebody to listen to me. At 17 years of age, I became a parent. Five months later, Henry was killed in a road traffic accident. I decided that night that I wouldn't get in the car, but instead that I would wait for him and the two lads he was giving a lift home to to return. Neither of them, not any one of the three of them, made it home that night. With Henry's death, my voice once again disappeared. In fact, I lost my hearing for three days. The shock, the body trying to protect myself against those words. His funeral and the months after were very difficult. I returned to school to study for my leaving cert. And I realized that my battle had just got a whole lot greater. I now had a little baby daughter to mind a daughter that I wanted to give confidence to, to empower with knowledge and give the most love to. We were a team, but I was in charge. I had no energy, I had no hope, and I was lost. The time I didn't use my voice. For most of my life, unfortunately, I had accepted being spoken down to. And I actually believed that with it, I should take myself down. Despite continuing through education and working hard to build up my confidence, I felt muted. I struggled. I was good at school. I loved education. I actually found solace on words on a page. Yeats, Heaney, Bronte, Whitman, Chekhov. So I immersed myself in learning, in developing my mind. I had confidence in learning. I describe education as a boomerang. I gained confidence by studying, and when I tested my knowledge, that confidence returned back to me. And so I discovered how I could find my voice. However, the words that told me I would never account to anything, never be wanted by anyone, or indeed was never wanted, stayed with me. I fought them daily. Worryingly, I believed them. The 22-year-old me is now at university. My daughter Sophie, now five years old, we've moved 150 miles away to a city that would eventually become my home. 
I'm studying for my final exams in university. I'm studying English, sociology and politics. On a wet Wednesday morning in April, I carry out my plan to finally end my voice. I cycle Sophie to school as normal. It's raining. I drop her at school. My vivid memory is that her bag is bigger than her little small frame. I kiss her goodbye and I turn my back on the school. And I turn my back on my child. I cycle the two miles back to the coastline of Galway Bay, where I'm living in an apartment. It's still raining. I stop in the first pharmacy and buy 12 paracetamol. Stop in a petrol station and buy a bottle of wine. I hop off my bike at another pharmacy and buy a second box of 12 paracetamol. My shopping trip continues. I pop into the local corner shop and buy another bottle of red wine. I'm not even buying the same grape, for goodness sake. If memory serves me right, a Merlot and a Shiraz. I stop in the third pharmacy and buy a box of 24 paracetamol. Job done. For the next seven hours, I raise my glass to death, to ending my voice, to relinquishing the feeling of not being able to speak, to not being heard. The weight of voicelessness is just too much to bear. And I believe that day that Sophie would be much better off without me. I had no voice, so nobody to listen to me. So for me, I had nothing. I drank tears that day in equal measure with the red wine. I swallowed most of the white tablets and I drowned my voice. And I got sick a lot. At 6 p.m., Sophie was dropped off by the childminder because I didn't show up to collect her. I got scared and I realized that I couldn't die in front of her. So I called an ambulance and I whispered that I needed help. Admitted to hospital, my voice and my body were weak and I feared for Sophie. My fears were well-founded. I tried to tell the medics I was sad, not mad. They tried to section me. A decision ba taken by a doctor who didn't once look in my eye, ask me my story, or who wanted to hear my words. I left hospital. I continued with my studies. I completed my final exams, and I got my much-wanted course. I took the antidepressants for a year but I felt that they didn't challenge the root of the problem. So after a year of medical prescriptions, I began to self-medicate medicate with education, and I discovered running outdoors. When I found my voice. Fast forward two years, and I have an honours degree and a postgraduate diploma in, you guessed it, storytelling. I'm a PR and journalism graduate. Ironically, my first job is as a broadcast journalist. I get paid to talk. Each day I'm talking to 68,000 people in a local radio station in County Donegal, and they want to listen to me. And with that, I had found my voice. The truth is, the voice cannot be permanently silenced. It is a force that is pushed along by emotion by outside influences, and by your inner strength. Your words will eventually rise to the top. It was this professional recognition of my voice that began my journey to now, to becoming an international speaker, an entrepreneur, a published author, a noted blogger, a trainer, a consultant, and a TEDx speaker. All the things that I believed that I couldn't do because I didn't allow myself to have a voice. I believe the talking down that had befallen me over the years. The voice is a weapon used to talk down. My defense against a lifetime of talking down 
was to inhale those words and wrap them around me. I donned extra layers of vicious words and wrapped them around me like punishment until I found my voice. I didn't believe my words were worthy of being heard, so instead I kept them within. All the while, they built up inside me like a house of cards. But it was inevitable that this house of cards would collapse. Ladies and gentlemen, words are meant to be spoken. Voices are meant to be heard. Today, I stand before you with my voice strong, my heart repaired, and my resolve unwavering. Today, we have so many ways to give our voice a platform, not least social media, online videos, and TED. But the voice we must stand up for is our own. Don't let it be drowned down. Don't let it hide inside you, and don't let anyone else take your words away from you. Similarly, do not use your words to talk another down. Do not be that person. Today, I speak, I listen, I share, I inspire, I storytell. It is my medicine, my prescription, and my passion. Today, I am using my voice to up speak against verbal abuse. Transform your today, your tomorrow. Up speak for yourself or encourage another to do it. Up speak and stand up to talking down. Up speak and empower your voice, your words, your thoughts, your opinions. Up speak and transform your future or the future of another. Do not be afraid of your own fame. Be proud of yourself. It's actually taken me a long time to like me. To those of you who may feel shame in your shoes, take my advice. Kick off that shame or do what I do. Put on a pair of killer red heels. It's my strategy. Ted, you have given a voice to thousands and you have given your stage to me to give noise to my words. I'm up speaking, I'm standing up to talking down. I'm giving my voice a good name. Will you, will you join my up speaking movement? Thank you. <laughs>